Stone magazine found it. Oh my gosh. I'm not cute up on that, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I'm going to go uh, out on a limb and say I think Rolling Stone was formed in the 60s. 69? 69? 67? <laughs> I know that there's a Rolling Stone band, like a rock band. I'm not quite sure how the relation comes together, but maybe they do. Did they start the company? I don't know. I'm so bad. But at least I'm at the launch. I know the Rolling Stones magazine was founded after the band The Rolling Stones came out. So I'd have a, a, a rough idea that it was founded in the 70s or the 60s. Or if you look at Mick Jagger now, maybe the 50s or 20s. Maybe around the time Titanic sank. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere around there. Sometime in the 80s. I'm thinking around when I was born. I was born in the 80s. I think the significance of Rolling Stone finally coming to South Africa is that um, I mean, like I said before, Brahe was on the cover. Um, he's not just a South African musician, he is a world musician. Um, and it gives an artist like me something to aspire to. Okay, well, I think it's absolutely amazing, you know, the fact that the South African industry is getting recognition. And I think a whole lot of our celebrities, a whole lot of our well-known people are going to be gracing the covers and they're going to be getting profiled. So I think it's an amazing platform. You know what, I hope that they cover a lot of like South African legends. I think they did really, really well by covering Huma Sigela as kind of the launch. Uh, he's the perfect candidate. I think on the next cover of Rolling Stones, I'd like to see a young African artist on the cover. I'd like to see them uh, put Brenda on the cover. Uh, Brenda would be an awesome uh, cover. Definitely like to see a female next. Um, yo, Tandiswa, man. She's my sister, she's here in the building. I think, yo, we gotta give it up to old girl. And the gentlemen go? Okay, the goons go? South Africa to maintain what Rolling Stones SA has managed to maintain throughout what 40 years, 50 years. Um, so I think it's big shoes to fill. The guy that started Rolling Stone is still running it till this day, and he made the decision to actually allow us and everybody else that's brought it to the country to actually bring it to South Africa. A lot of people have tried here, but this is the team that finally got it to the country. So the importance of the magazine being in this country is that for once there's going to be a magazine that actually focuses on the artists. Playboy came into South Africa and I'm personally a huge fan of Playboy magazine, right? But like it disappointed here in South Africa and I just hope that they live up to the American standards. We got a lot of, yes, we got a lot of music magazines, but Rolling Stone is not a music magazine. It is an everything magazine. It's, it, it, it talks about everything that, from politics, that also embraces music. And then, ne and then next, she's a girl who writes the subtitles, you know, the subtitles that are over there. This is her. I knew, I knew it was you. I'm a ninja, guys. I knew it was you. take those tapes and Yeah. And then next, Lala on the cover. Boom, that's it. I'm out. Subtitles, give me more subtitles. Believe it or not, I was a rocker. I was in a rock band when I was a kid. I was on lead guitar. And we were called Cryptic Ash. It was an all-girl punk band. <laughs> a little 411 on me. You know what? When I was like in high school, I used to love drum and bass and alternative. And I used to listen to like rock, like hard rock. I know, you'd never think a girl with a weave like this would be listening to rock and like drum and bass. Metallica, yo. Big shots to the Yo, Kurt Cobain, rock and roll, uh, Axl Rose, ah, Slash. I used to like Avril Lavigne. I don't know if she still falls under, but I also like the Polytones. I think they're absolutely hot. Favorite rock star of all time has to be Jimi Hendrix. Um, but I think Kanye West is a rock star, man. What a rock star. Yeah. I'm gonna let you finish. Jimi Hendrix, man. Jimi Hendrix. Have you ever? I play guitar, so yeah, Jimi Hendrix, he's the man. But then, you know, you've got Pink Floyd, you've got ACDC, you've got, I mean, these are great. I've always loved Bon Jovi. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. My favorite rock star of all time, I think Michael Jackson, 
uh, even though he wasn't really a rock star, but he was a, a pop star and a superstar. So Michael Jackson would have to be my favorite. Who's rocking my world? Huh. Wow, no one, sadly. <laughs> oh, who's rocking my world? That's the mayor. <laughs> who's rocking my world right now? That'd be my man. The person that's <coughs> rocking my world right now is my husband. He's amazing. He's so supportive. He never comes to these events. Everyone keeps asking, where's your husband, where's your husband? He's not into this frivolous stuff. I think the sexiest instrument, it's very stereotypical saying a saxophone. So I'm going to say the double bass cello. Uh, I could just picture a half naked man behind a cello with the strings in his hand, strumming his strings. Sexiest instrument. I think it's a guitar. I don't know, there's something about a guitar, but obviously you'll have to have a nice voice to go with it. doesn't help having the instrument and then your voice doesn't match. Electric guitar can be extremely sexy. Um, a piano, not so much. Violin, not so much. Clarinet, not so much. The sexiest instrument has got to be the bagpipe. I mean, duh. I mean, how, what sexier, what can be more sexy than the bagpipes? Come on. I think a bass guitar would be like, dun, 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 dun. you know, it's got like a, like a deep bass to it, which is quite nice. I don't know why the hell I was doing those moves, but I did them.